In this video, we're going to talk about entity relationship diagrams. And I have to tell you right out of the gate, this is the primary type of diagram that I use. I use it all the time. It doesn't matter what I'm building. I always have an entity relationship diagram lying right next to me. If it's too big to fit on a page or two, I'll just put it in a binder and I'll keep flipping through it. If I'm working on something a long time, I'll put it on the wall. That's what I always need. I always need to remember how exactly is it that all of these entities fit together? How is it that one object connects to another? Which other objects is it connected through? So as a programmer, this is really my primary thing. Now I know, I know that we have class diagrams which can show us the same thing, but class diagrams show us way more than that. They also show us what kind of factory classes that we have. They show us all kinds of patterns, right? But um, but other than that, they also show us all of the functions and stuff like that. And as a programmer, I don't really need that all the time because in, in my IDE, in my integrated development environment, I can see those things, right? If I'm calling the right class, then I can see that, oh, there, there might actually be a factory class that could help me create an instance of this object. This uh, instance that you just created this object has these functions available on it. So I don't need to look that up all the time. It's a great diagram to have, but for me personally, the entity relationship diagram is the one that I go back to and that I keep on using and updating all of the time. So maybe that's just me, but it's a really helpful and really powerful tool. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So let's start building that entity relationship diagram then. Create new and entity relationship diagram. And this is gonna be our library, ER for entity relationships. And it's gonna build a bunch of uh, stuff right here that's always just gonna be annoying. So we have an idea of what we have right here. So one of the great things about having built the diagrams that we have already, our context and component diagrams is that we could actually just divide this now. We could say we only want to build our entity relationship for users. That's it. And it's a great place to start, by the way, because most systems have users. Maybe you can reuse another model for that. Um, and then if you are really dividing it like this, then the user um, component is something that a lot of other things are going to point to. So you have a book that's lent out, but to whom? You have an invoice that's sent out to who? So you would have to connect the other things to the user that way. Um, and so because of that, I would almost always start with the users. Um, the users can be set up in a number of different ways and you can probably find something uh, that already explains that. So that's why I'm skipping it now, but I'm just uh, expecting that there is something called the user and then just uh, talking about the lending system itself. So let's say that we have, uh, we have something called the book Right, that book is going to have a book ID. Um, it will probably be serial. That's the easiest way to set it up. Serial is, is just one word that conveys that this is going to be a big integer. It's going to be unsigned and it's going to be our primary key and it's going to auto increment. Serial is short for all those things. Um, and you can, of course, decide whether the data types here are necessary. Uh, because if you're using this as a quick lookup every time that you're programming something, then it probably isn't necessary to write all the data types on it, but you can you can choose to do that. So what does a book have? Well, we're trying to make this simple, right? So I'm just gonna say that a, uh, a book has an author uh, and that author is gonna come from a different table, right? We're gonna need that. So it's just gonna be an author ID, serial, and that author ID is going to be a foreign key. So PK up here stands for primary key. That's what you use to identify something in this table. Foreign key down here, FK, is gonna be something that you need to identify a primary key in a different table. So that's how you connect the tables with each other. So a book needs an author. It also, I'm gonna, by the way, I'm clicking this uh, table and I just click again. Now it's showing um, this um, specific field, I'm clicking it again, then it shows the whole row. That's what I want to duplicate. So I'm hitting Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. And I have another field just like it. And the I don't just need an author, I need a publisher, which is also gonna be a foreign key. Um, and then I need a, um, a title, and that's gonna be a, a varchar. 
And once again, how much detail you want in here, that's entirely up to you, but it should not be null. Um, what else do we need? Well, this is just a conceptual book, right? Then we need to have actual books in a warehouse. So let's um, build our warehouses. Or our locations or whatever we want to call it. But each of them need an ID. So that's going to be our warehouse ID. It might be in a specific city or whatever. You might want to relate that to a city that exists somewhere else. But just to keep things simple. Oh, by the way, this is not a foreign key. Um, we can just say that this is um, that this is in a uh, is in a city, Vachar. Uh, and we're just expecting that there is only one in the city, and then it might have a title as well, Vachar. It might have an address, Vajar, and so on. And an address would often be um, an entity in and of itself, once again, because it's something that's so useful and both users and warehouses have addresses. So there's no reason to implement the same uh, data fields in two different entities. You just have one that would point to whatever uh, it needs or have relational tables between them. None of this is uh, foreign keys. So the next thing that we need is that a book might have copies in different warehouses. So a copy is one way to name this, but by convention, when you have a relational table that only has um, the job to connect one entity to another, you would conventionally name it by naming those two tables with an underscore between them. So this would be a, a warehouse book because it's it's copy of a book in a warehouse. That also means that it doesn't have any primary key. It just have two has two for uh, foreign keys. So it has um, the book ID and it has the warehouse ID. Now, this is where we get into cardinality because um, the warehouse here can have, uh, this is technically built to be a many-to-many -many relationship. See, the problem is that in a database base, you cannot build a many-to-many -many relationship um, because you always need to point in one direction. You need an ID. So here, an author, uh, and let's just uh, build an author actually to show this difference. So I'll duplicate this one and say that this is an author. It has an author ID, which um, they then have a title and a name. And I don't know what else it would be. So I'll just delete that. But these are not foreign keys either. But a book has one author. Well, they could have multiple. But in this case, Let's say, no, they have one publisher. Let's make this a better example. Sorry for the confusion. So we'll build publisher as well. And the publisher needs to have a publisher ID. And they would need to have some kind of a title bar char. They would need to have some kind of a uh, public identification number or something, which is also going to be maybe even a VARCHAR if we're never going to do math on it anyways. Uh, but neither of these are foreign keys. And by the way, the title up here is going to be a VARCHAR as well. And so is this. So a book has one publisher, exactly one publisher. So we just use a regular arrow and in, um, or sorry, a, a regular arrowhead here to say that this is a one-to-one. -one. Well, it's a one-to-many because one publisher can have many books, but uh, one book can only have uh, one publisher. So here, this is, uh, that was wrong. We're using the, uh, 
the, the zero or many. So the circle here on the line, that means none. And then these three lines out here means many. So this is one or many, this is always many, uh, but there's, um, so that's zero many, and that's what we want. We want one over here. The other one is going to be zero to many. So what we're saying here is that, that a publisher, one publisher can have multiple books under their belt, but one, but one book can only have one publisher and it always has one publisher. If it didn't need a publisher, but it could have one, then we would use this, uh, this circle before it, then we would use this one instead. But that's not what we want right now. We want a one-to-many relationship. And the way you implement that is that then the book will just always point to the publisher. Now for authors, a book can have multiple authors. So this actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What we would want to do is instead is we want to build a, relation, a relational uh, table to say that the um, author here um, has a book author table. And in that book author table, there would be a, um, a one to many relationship where each uh, entry down here would point to one author, but an author can point to many of these entries, right? Uh, that's the whole point of having this. Uh, so one author to many of these. So that's the other way around. And many of these. Well, zero or many of these. You might have a, have an author in here that that's not connected to anything yet. It is their purpose, but they don't need to be. And then we can do the same thing right here. Well, actually, we'll just draw it opposite because then the arrows are pointing the right way to begin with, and we don't have to exchange them. So that also means that generally you should expect that that. Um, that you have your IDs um, where these many heads are. So here we would need to have a uh, book ID serial. Um, and actually, it's not going to be serial. It's just going to be big int. But um, and then we would have our author ID serial and these would be foreign keys. That means that the author ID is no longer applicable down here. So generally, you'll want to have a many to one, where you have that uh, that publisher. So you have many books for one publisher. One publisher has many books, and uh, this publisher ID is what's going to have this arrow. This arrow doesn't need to point directly into the foreign key. It would be exactly as good of a diagram if, oh, if, um, if we were to do like this and, uh, and the arrow goes somewhere completely different inside of the box. It doesn't need to point to the exact line in the diagram. It just needs to point to the right box. <laughs> but here we're showing how, um, how a book has one author, has one publisher, but it can have multiple authors. And but one publisher can publish many books, and one author can be the author of many books. And a book can have many authors. And it would be the same down here to say that well, uh, a warehouse can contain multiple instances of the same book. So, um, so we can just connect that like this to say a warehouse might have no book, uh, might have. Um, several instances of the same book um, and several instances of that book can be in that same warehouse. Once again, a, a good way to just make sure you, you uh, turn this the right way around is just to make sure that these many arrows um, are on the same box. So if you have two IDs or two foreign keys in, in your entity, then you'll need to have two arrows with that arrowhead on them. So 
We're putting books in warehouses and we're giving them authors and publishers. And obviously we should move this around a bit so it could fit on a single piece of paper. That's what these dotted lines are. Those are pieces of paper. So right now we would print this on four pieces of paper, uh, which would be terrible. So we can just move that whole thing around a little bit here. Let's get the right arrowhead, move it into a single piece of paper and the rest are gonna disappear. Zoom into 100% again. And this is gonna be something that we can print and put in a report or a tender or whatever it is that we need. So that's the entity relationship model. Now, an entity relationship diagram can sometimes look a little bit different. Some people teach a form of entity relationship diagrams where you have a square per, um, <laughs> per table, and then you have a diamond shape for relational tables, you know, the ones that we name uh, book author, for instance, that would just be a diamond shape, and then you would know that that was gonna be the name. And then on the squares that are gonna tell you about each um, entity, you'd have a line out to a circle that describes each of the um, each of the columns in that table. Those diagrams are huge and they're hard to get an overview of, and I am directly opposed to them. I don't know why they exist and I don't know why they're taught, but they do exist. And if you see diagrams that look like that, it is an entity relationship diagram as well. I just feel like this gives a much, much better overview. So those are the type that I use. And with all that out of the way, now you should be ready to jump into the a more object oriented class diagram and figure out how exactly we can piece this together in an object oriented application. So let's do that in the next video. I'll leave a link right here.